aware that in, in history, you know, people have tended to explain things in terms of the phenomena that they're aware of at the time. For example, in a certain stage, everything would be clockwork. More recently, electromagnetics, and, you know, everything's explained by this. But if you go back to the esoteric traditions, you know, these are temporary, illusionary explanations of a much bigger reality. And I wonder whether you're open to the, to the possibility that your model, computer-based, very contemporary science, computer modeling-based, similarly is a metaphor and not a reality for the way things are. Yes, absolutely. That's why I start this saying, don't confuse the model of reality with reality. This is just a model. And the model has to be, you know, it has to be useful to people. In order to be useful for people, it has to talk in a language that they understand and that they communicate with. And the language that is understood at the time is very perishable. What was said and what was understood two or three thousand years ago is very different than what is said and what is understood now. So the purpose of my model is to try to, to help those people who are mainly left-brained, those that are in Western culture, whether that Western culture is now residing in the East, you know, the West and North, and that Western culture is spreading all over the planet. And as people get more and more left brain dominant, they get further and further away from the big ideas. They get more and more trapped into thinking that their intellect and their logic tells all and answers all questions. And it's those people that are harder to reach. And it's those people that wield great power and great influence in our society today. And it's those people that, that this is meant to, to reach more than any others. There are others who don't need this description. They have, you know, and I should also say that there are lots of valid models. This is not the model. You know, there's lots of other models, and models work for different people. So there are, there are you know, models that come out of the Eastern philosophy. You know, most Western left-brained people find it poetry and unintelligible, and it doesn't make sense. So this is a model for the rest of us, you know, who uh, hopefully the, the science and the technology people who do wield great power in our society. If you, if you look for the religion of the West, the thing that Westerners believe, the thing that they take to heart, the thing that they, they have assumptions that say it's true, the religion of the West is science. So if you... If you want to reach the West, you know, the East has its own methods and its own philosophies and its own things. But if you want to reach the West, but the West now is everywhere. You know, the West is in the East. The West is taking over the world as far as the culture goes. So if you want to make an impact today, then you need to present metaphysics as physics. You need to come at it from a, from a technical and a logical viewpoint because anything else will be discounted. So no, I don't think this is the, you know, the end of all models. This is basically a, a model for now for a particular reason. And uh, the good thing about it is that it does bridge the metaphysical and the physical world because it's solving problems in physics that have never been solved before. So it's good physics. It's also making understandings of metaphysics and ways, you know, it's a model. Ways of looking. A model is just ways of looking at things. It's a way of looking at things that makes metaphysics more understandable to the logical mind. Now, you can understand metaphysics without a logical mind. But that leaves a lot of people out. So, that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of where it is. And I'm always looking for exceptions. You know, if you ever believe that you know everything and that your model is complete, you know, that's your, that's the first step, you know, to crashing and burning. That's, that's not productive. You have to always start with the assumption that there's more to learn, more to know, and that you have a piece of the picture, but you don't have the whole picture. Your model needs to be able to develop and grow as the information and data comes in. That's why I say you always stay both open-minded and skeptical. You know, and I tell you, don't believe this. You know, don't believe what I tell you. You have to find out for yourself. Well, I don't believe it either. <clears throat> I don't believe what I tell me. 
in the sense that this isn't a belief. This is a hypothesis. This is a model. And if the model fits the data, then it's a good model.